gentleman. Senator Warren, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good to see you again, General Brown, and congratulations on your nomination, Mrs. Brown. Welcome here today. So the Department of Defense is full of talented, patriotic leaders who are working hard to keep us safe. Even so, the Pentagon remains too cozy with powerful defense companies that are reaping huge profits from hundreds of billions of dollars in government contracts. When our top leaders leave government service and head straight to big paydays on the boards of the Department of Defense's largest contractors or as defense industry lobbyists, it sends the message that the Pentagon is for sale. Now, during his confirmation hearing before this committee, Secretary Austin publicly committed not to go to work as a lobbyist for defense contractors after he leaves his current job. And I appreciate the commitment, and I believe that the American people do as well. If confirmed, General Brown, you will be the president's top military advisor, and your actions will set the tone for the entire armed forces. So I'd like to hear you make those same commitments. General Brown, if confirmed, will you commit to not going to work as a lobbyist for a defense contractor for four years after you leave government service? You know, Senator, I'm sensitive to the perceptions of a conflict of interest that we discussed in your office, and I don't intend to pursue opportunities in the defense sector or a lobbyist upon retirement from military service. Uh, you know, my passion is in leadership and mentoring. Good. Uh, and that's where I want to focus my uh, my efforts after military service of uh, building the next generation of leaders. I, I appreciate that, and I will take that as a yes. Let's do the second part, even though I think you got the answer in there. Lobbying isn't the only way that former officials cash in on their government service. Giant defense contractors frequently hire former top Pentagon officials in non-lobbying roles and add them to their corporate boards. The former Pentagon official gets paid handsomely, and the defense contractor touts their name in order to get more contracts. General Dunford, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, joined the board of Lockheed Martin, DOD's top contractor, less than five months after leaving government service. And so far, he's received nearly a million dollars in compensation in that role. By contrast, Secretary Austin pledged not to join the board of one of these companies when he left government. So General Brown, if confirmed, do you commit to not receive compensation from a defense contractor for four years, including compensation for being a board member? I, uh, I did the same answer I just uh, highlighted. Uh, okay, I I'll take that as a yes then. You know, it's really important. I'm going to take you at your word on this, and the American people and I will hold you to it. This is a matter of personal integrity, something that I know is very important to you. I want to close and use our remaining time by asking about the impact of the holds on the promotions and assignments of senior military officers that the senator from Alabama has imposed. The families of these service members are held at a standstill. They're unsure about where to enroll their kids in school or whether they need to arrange a move across country or even somewhere else around the world. General Brown, can you just spend a minute here and talk to us about the impact that these holds are having on our military families? There are several factors that I think about as, as we're going through this and, and how we are uh, working to mitigate uh, the challenges associated with the holds. There's aspects of uh, readiness and the transition in leadership um, and for our, our young service members to know who uh, is in the position of uh, leadership that has, it's qualified, has the experience to be there and not, in some cases, put in a, uh, we have, you know, strong deputies, but at the same time, they don't have the same level of experience uh, going forward. In addition to the senior officers, there's a whole chain of events that go down to our more junior officers, and that has an impact. Uh, it has an impact on their uh, for, you know, progression in their uh, career field, potentially, because if one doesn't get promoted or move on, then they're, you know, they're, they're blocking a uh, spot for someone else. At the same time, we have several members who are, have served honorably and are ready to retire, but they're going to, in some cases, stay uh, with us to help us mitigate through, through that challenge. 
the area that hits us, uh, I think, uh, that we do need to think about is how it impacts our families. Um, because it has an impact, um, not just for the senior officer, but you know, all their staff and all those below them, um, it has an impact. And as you highlighted, it's, whether it's school, whether it's employment, or the fact that they've already sold their home because they thought they were gonna move, and, and now are living in temporary quarters, uh, that creates a challenge. The last thing I'd highlight on that is my concern there is future retention. Mm -hmm. Because we have our more junior officers who now will look up and say, uh, if that's the challenge that we have to deal with in the future, uh, I may not wanna, I'm gonna balance between my family and serving in a senior position. And we will lose talent uh, uh, because of uh, those, those challenges. And uh, our, our, uh, the spouse network is alive and well, yeah. and the spouses will uh, compare notes. And uh, you know, the member may wanna serve, but the, the spouses uh, and the families get a huge vote and, and why we continue uh, to be able to serve. And I, I thank my family for that opportunity to allow I, me to continue I to see serve. Mrs. Brown nodding her head on this as well. You know, if the senator from Alabama continues his reckless action, he will soon be holding 650 leaders who have served their country honorable hostage. And as you rightly point out, that has effects on many more of the best and brightest who have volunteered to serve uh, our nation. I heard the senator say as he concluded his questions that if there was anything he could do to help uh, you in your actions and help the service that he would be glad to do it. What he could do to help is lift this stay before it does more damage to our country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Warren. Senator Budd, please. Thank you, Chairman.